ads. If you're specifically interested in generating hypertrophy, it's all about trying to generate those really hard, almost painful, localized contractions of muscle. A lot of reasons to want to get stronger. And I should just mention that it's not always the case that getting stronger involves muscles getting bigger. There are ways for muscles to get stronger without getting bigger. However, increasing the size of a muscle almost inevitably increases the strength of that muscle, at least to some degree. Reasons why most everyone should want to get their muscles stronger is that muscles are generally getting progressively weaker across the lifespan. So when I say getting stronger, it's not necessarily about being able to move increasing amounts of weight in the gym. Although if that's your goal, what I'm about to discuss will be relevant to that, but rather to offset some of the normal decline in strength and posture and the ability to generate a large range of movement safely that occurs as we age. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, we just tend to lose function in this neuromuscular system as we get older and doing things to offset that has been shown again and again to be beneficial for the neuromuscular system, for protection of injury, for enhancing the strength of bones and bone density. So there are a lot of reasons to use resistance exercise that, that extend far beyond just the desire to increase muscle size. Because I know many of you are interested in increasing muscle size, but many of you are not. So there's an important principle of muscle physiology called the Henneman size principle. And the Henneman size principle essentially says that we recruit what are called motor units. Motor units are just the connections between nerve and muscle from a, in a pattern that staircases from low threshold to high threshold. What this means is when you pick up something that is light, you're going to use the minimum amount of nerve to muscle energy in order to move that thing. Likewise, when you pick up an object that's heavy, you're going to use the minimum amount of nerve to muscle connectivity and energy in order to move that object. So it's basically a conservation of energy principle. Now, if you continue to exert effort of movement, what will happen is you will tend to recruit more and more motor units with time. And that process of recruiting more neurons, more lower motor neurons, as if you recall from the beginning of the episode, these lower motor neurons are in our spinal cord and they actually dump uh, a chemical, acetylcholine on muscle, cause the muscles to contract. As you recruit more and more of these motor units, these connections between these lo lower motor neurons and muscle, that's when you start to get changes in the muscle. That's when you open the gate for the potential for the muscles to get stronger and to get larger, if that's what your goal is. And so the way this process works has been badly misunderstood in the kind of online literature of weight training and bodybuilding and even in sports physiology. The Henneman size principle is kind of a, a, a foundational principle within muscle physiology. But many people have come to interpret it by saying that the way to recruit high threshold motor units, the ones that are hard to get to, is to just use heavy weights. And that's actually not the case. As we'll talk about, the research supports that weights in a very large range of sort of a percentage of your maximum, anywhere from 30 to 80%, so weights that are not very light but are moderately light, too heavy, can cause changes in the connections between nerve and muscle that lead to muscle strength and muscle hypertrophy. Put differently, Heavy weights can help build muscle and strength, but they are not required. What one has to do is adhere to a certain number of parameters, just a couple of key variables that I'll spell out for you. And if you do that, you can greatly increase muscle hypertrophy, muscle size, and or muscle strength if that's what you want to do. And you don't necessarily have to use heavy weights in order to do that. Now, I'm sure the power lifters and the, the people that like to move heavy weights around will say, no, if you want to get strong, you absolutely have to lift he heavy weights. And that might be true if you want to get very strong. But for most people who are interested in supporting their muscular such that they offset any age-related decline in strength or in increasing hypertrophy in, and strength to some degree, there really isn't a need 
to lie about the Henneman size principle, which many people out there are doing, and claiming that you absolutely need to use the heaviest weights possible in order to build strength and muscle. Avoid cold immersion, so ice baths and being in cold water up to the neck, uncomfortably cold, within the four hours after a, a training session that's designed to evoke an adaptation, either endurance hypertrophy or strength because the inflammation that you experience from a hard endurance workout or from a hard strength or a hard hypertrophy workout is the stimulus by what that you're going to adapt to the cold water immersion reduces inflammation and can short circuit some of that after four hours you're probably okay but if you can do it a different day or you can do it before those sessions that's better heat however, can be done immediately after training. And it's probably beneficial because of the way that it dilates the vascular system and deliver perfuses the muscles and ligaments, etc., with more nutrients. Pick three exercises, compound exercises, multi-joint uh, movements, do them for, do three to five exercises for three to five repetitions per set, rest three to five minutes and do that three to five times per week. And for details, you can, again, look to the episode. It's timestamped. But what's interesting about this is three to five times a week is a lot for a muscle group. Squatting three, five times a week for five reps, meaning you're working pretty heavy, meaning you're close to failure, but not failure for strength generally. What Andy taught me is that people who are training mostly for strength can do these low rep type regimens frequently because most of the adaptation is neural. And because you're not pushing to failure in most cases, you don't get that sore. And so it's the motor neurons getting the muscle fibers to contract more intensely or with more efficiency in other ways that's leading to these strength gains. And this is why powerlifters can train every day or five days a week or four days a week. For hypertrophy, I learned from Andy that the repetition range can be pretty broad you think anywhere from six to 30 repetitions, you should do 10 sets per muscle group per week, maybe even a bit more. So high volume. High volume, but you have to go to failure or beyond in order to stimulate growth. Why does it work at such a great range of repetitions? Well, there apparently are three ways that you stimulate hypertrophy and maybe more. One is tissue micro damage to the tissue. The other is through some sort of tension-based changes in the molecular gene programs of cells that lead to protein synthesis that don't that are distinct from damage. And the other are metabolic effects of like high repetition work of superfusion of the muscle with blood. 